Welcome to day three of planting. I got to the first field here. I got here later than I wanted, but it was a late night last night, so I slept in a little bit. I pull in, I'm getting everything going, and I can't find my vac controls. This is really light seed, so I had to turn the vacuum down. I can't find it, can't find it. I go through. My monitor is now reading that I have a 12 row planter instead of a 16 row. So I don't know for sure what is wrong. It's something in the, uh, in the controller. I dug through all the fuses or all, all the connections and everything. I didn't see anything. I called our, our dealer and uh, the guy over there told me to unplug it let it sit for oh probably a couple minutes he said five minutes is ideal so that's probably what i'm gonna do so what it is it's this connection it goes in right here there's something not reading correct so i'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes yet and then plug it back in start the tractor up and see if things work if not this is far beyond me so I will be calling deer and we will be having somebody come out and I'm sure they're busy right now. Moment of truth. We're going to figure out if things are going to work correctly or not. If they aren't, this will pop up an error deal in a little bit here. Prescription rates, yep, I know. Yeah, this is what it was doing. So if I go here, GS3, equipment, implement, right there, see how it shows 12 rows? So if I go to my planter, Diagnostics. See, the following row unit controllers are offline. So I went through, I, I checked that stuff. I don't know what else to do. If I go right here, nothing's showing up. I've got row one, so I guess I could plant with one row and then leave seven and then plant with eight. Yeah, stupid. But, all right, well, I'm gonna call the deer. These guys are really good. They'll get us going. Uh, somebody will be here quick. They always are. Waiting for the service tech, and I went and unplugged and replugged in a whole bunch of connections, kind of looked at pins, tried to see if anything was bent. We're just gonna try it again. If you call tech support, that's always the first thing they tell you to do. Have you unplugged it and plugged it back in? Try to restart it. We'll try it, we'll see if it works. Yeah, no. Yep, still got a 12 row. The tech support solution did not work. So I'll keep waiting. I'm planting again. But I have a problem. When we set up the sections for the section control, uh, the tech put 14 in because that's what we were told uh, is the maximum that you can do with our monitor. But I knew that we had 16 before. So my climate field view was not mapping correctly. So I was like, all right, well, I'll stop on the end and I'll put my two extra sections in. Well, what that did, was deleted all of my coverage up to that point. So now what I have is I have no row clutches in the headlands. So I'm trying to do my best to control my overlap. 
I don't know for sure. There might be a way just to run the drive over it and have it record that we're doing something without actually planting it again because obviously I don't want to go plant over top of those again. So yeah, trying to get it figured out, but that's okay. I, at least it's just this side of the field. I can still correct on the other side and be okay. So it is what it is. I will make it work. I figured out how to fix my problem, but I have a pretty big feeling that my brother is not going to like it. Basically what I ended up doing was having to lay in some extra end rows. Uh, that way I could generate another bit of tracking around the outside in this spot. Along right here, not a big deal. Along that end row and along that end row, it's probably not gonna like it because now I'm gonna be 120 feet of end rows. So when he's spraying, he won't cover everything. So he's gonna have to spray out into the end rows, drive across and then turn around. He's not gonna like it, but I figure it's better to do this than it is to essentially double plant all of our ends. So I'm doing it. And if he doesn't like it, he'll get over it. Planting continues. I've got 20 acres left to do on this field. So in 80, that should have taken me three hours. And we are now at four o'clock. I got here at 10 this morning, about 10.30 ish, I would say. But we've had lots of problems. Um, so I had to go through, we had to redo all of our settings on the planter, basically act like it was the first day out in the field again, which is never fun. Um, so we went through, did that. Now, I've had a few issues. Uh, there's a few wet spots in this farm. So as I've come around, I've picked up some moisture on that brush belt that runs underneath. And I brought some of that up into the meter. So what I was having was I had one row that I was reading that I was having lots of doubles. So what that is is that I've got two seeds sucked up against the plate and it's dropping two at a time instead of, instead of one, which we don't want. We don't want two plants right next to each other, just like we don't want the plants to be too far apart either. So I open that up and I see that we had some moisture that got up into there. So I had to clean that out and try to dry that up. I'm thinking that it's because of picking up moisture. We do have one of our liquid system tubes that was kind of uh, running on the um, on the disc and maybe it's picking up moisture there but if that was the case I would have expected it to still be happening because if I'm not running my liquid system right now um, we don't need it right here <sighs> excuse me no sleep last night is catching up to me But I think I've got that problem solved. We'll have to see when we go to the next farm. For now, it's working really well. But when we go to the next farm, if we do have some issues with it, I would likely attribute it to the liquid system and that running on that disc blade. But you know, that's one of the drawbacks to one of these style of planters is you do have some issues sometimes that you wouldn't have in other planters. Uh, if you just had a seed tube, you know, you don't have to worry about moisture coming up the seed tube. You have to worry about plugging it, but with this, if you pick up moisture on that belt, if you pick up moisture on that belt and you get that into the meter, moisture mixes with the talc that we use to get the seed to flow sorry I didn't want to take my line for some reason I don't know but if you get that mixed in there 
that basically just gums up and forms a powder in there that is like rock hard. It's almost like concrete against the outside of that. And I'm not as concerned with where it's hard against there as I am with where there was currently moisture. So, but yeah, we're going. We might only get 120 done today instead of 200, but oh well, whatever, I guess. So in case anybody's curious why we would run this type of system if we have that issue that we can potentially suck up moisture with that brush belt, I'm gonna show you right now. So, right here is the speed, well, maybe just a titch faster. Right here is the speed that we would be planting normally, okay? So, we're moving along like that. Right here is the speed that we plant now. So, we plant twice as fast and with us we want to have this smaller planter size the big thing with it is because of our terraces so if we get too big of a planter we can't flex over our terraces so the solution is going to this type of planter that you plant faster with a smaller implement um i don't know you know long term is this the most brilliant thing i mean should we have gotten a 24 row conventional I don't think so and part of the reason that I say that is because the spacing and the singulation is better on this type of a planter so I don't I really like it I think it's worth the money it does a really good job honestly the faster you go the better the job it does um, if you have ride quality issues that is where you are going to basically be stuck so you can plant as fast as you have the ground worked up to be willing to accept that speed and for us a lot of times i mean if we can go over top of everything with that rolling basket like we're discovering this year you can pretty much end up at 100 percent right quality almost all the time so it actually works really nice we are very happy with it. We've definitely had some issues. There's been some learning curves with it, but all in all, it's a great machine. I would, yeah, I would definitely do the purchase again. It's raining. What does a farmer do when it's raining? Take your wife out to eat. Hey guys, welcome back. So the last day of planting that we were recording, uh, by the time I got the 80 finished up that we were working on, we loaded up, we took off, and we did 40 acres for our neighbor, kind of up by Rock Rapids. And by the time we were done with that, rain was right on top of us. Yesterday we got an inch of some very cold rain uh, it's going to be a few days. We're going to need the sun to come out and it's going to be a few days before we get back in the field. We don't really have much going on right now because of the rain that kind of shut us down. I've got a few little things to fix on the planter. Uh, one little thing to work on on that tractor. And then I've got to go mow a hog building and that's about it. Uh, we've got, my dad is out here right now running the skid loader and he is getting stuff ready He's, he has a load of hay going out that he sold uh, every year we put up maybe 150 200 big rounds of grass and some hay out of some pasture and stuff and that's kind of his baby I let he does everything with that that's his deal I don't really mess with it but I'm happy that we're getting it out of here this is actually where we used to feed cattle we had this pen and then we had this automated bunk system here and then we had this we had a fence line bunk over here that we've since tore out and then we had a pen on the other side you can see the the 7210 is hooked on the drill over there generally that side has become strictly storage 
we put a lot of stuff under there that we want to have under a roof. But that doesn't necessarily need to be enclosed. We're not too concerned if it gets a little wet. I'm happy that he's getting this out of here though, because I've got a dump box trailer that's currently in the barn that I want to back up into here then. But yeah, so we really don't have much going on. That's about it. I'll take you along while I fix a few things. And while I head up to uh, one of our hog buildings, I've got to take a nice little road trip in the utility tractor today and get that hacked off. It's getting really bad. <laughs> thing about this mower you got plenty of ponies to run it got her all hacked off time to head home seven miles my max speed on this tractor is 17 miles an hour gets to be a little bit of a long drive but oh well we got the hog building all mowed up we've got some corn going out and now I'm running the insecticide system I'm letting it run just fresh water because I have to replace that tube right there. It's running on the side of the disc opener and I'll show you what happens in the meter when that happens. It's not good. Is the old one and the new one side by side. You can see where that disc opener ground away on there. So then the liquid was coming out right here onto the disc itself. It was riding on the disc and then it would make that all gummed up in there. So if you come up in here to the meter, see how wet that is? That is all from that insecticide system running into there. See how it's lined up nice now? Hopefully it will work better. Now I'm just gonna clean this meter, all of this stuff here, try to get all that off of there. That way hopefully our seed will flow a little better. Basically I was just having an issue where I was getting lots of doubles. And the reason that I was getting that was because we had that, the talc and the seed treatment was mixing with that moisture and kind of creating a paste in there. I stopped and cleaned it out a couple times just to get through the rest of the day. It worked, it was okay. I was able to improve it. Planting a little bit heavier seed helped too on the next farm that we went to. But I got it fixed now, we should be good. We broke this joint right here where that goes together. And now, the sprayer doesn't read that this part of the boom is out, so it won't let us put the next part out. So I was told that I'm supposed to fix this. We think, if you look at this one, how far that's got that sucked back, we think that it's an issue with that right there, that it's not sucking it back far enough. So we've got to back this off, that way it can suck it back all the way. And then hopefully that will let us extend the next part of the boom. We're hoping so at least. There's a switch right here that reads that position. So we're thinking that this isn't getting far enough back and that's why we're not triggering the switch to allow the next one to go. So this is the job now. Tear into this, see if I can get this working. A little more. Kind of wiggle a little bit. Moment of truth. Is it going to work? Negative. That was a bunch of messing around for nothing. So what we're doing now to try to figure out if it's the sensor that's bad, we took the one from this side, 
and we're putting it in over here and swapping them vice versa. Okay. Is it going to work? Is it the sensor that's bad? We're about to find out. So now this one works. And that side doesn't. All right, so we know it's the sensor. It's the sensor. So we gotta get a new sensor. We'll get a new sensor tomorrow, get that installed, and then we'll be good to go.